I think I'm most influenced by the music itself. Once I have a specific vibe in front of me, um, this invites me to continue with that. Hey, my name is Ben Böhmer. Welcome to my studio in Berlin. Today we're gonna make a little walkthrough of my track Beyond Release for my new album, Begin Again. Most important inspiration I have, yeah, it's the music. <laughs> And I have a wonderful guest here, Francois from Production Music Live is here and together we will have a look into the project. Hey Ben, so this track you played it the first time at your circle set in the balloon. So what was the initial reaction of people to this track? I think that was the most asked track in, on YouTube. Uh, I saw so many comments and people were asking about the ID. I also looked up on YouTube and people uh, started to recreate that track uh, before it was actually released. Mm -hmm. And there was a, yeah, a huge number of people who were asking for it. So when you wrote the track, what was the first element you started the track with? What was the initial idea? I remember that I started with Apache, which is going from beginning to the end of the track. It sounds like this. And yeah, that was the very first element of the track. And uh, once this was written, it directly set the mood for the whole track and I immediately had a vision to complete this vibe. Mm -hmm. Can you open that thing quickly? Sure. I made it um, with a sample I did many years ago. Uh, I used the pluckers of the track Flug and Fall. I pitched them down. They sound like this. And the original sample, maybe you know it, sounds like this. So I just pitched it down by six semitones, had a, a kind of distorted effect chain and put it in the stereo panorama and now it sounds like this. And this is really setting the group and the vibe and the energy of the track. Mm -hmm. That set up, what was the next element that was written to it? I remember that I started with the theme sound, with the main synth. Mm -hmm. um, that was this sound. Let me play it. Most of the time when I have sounds like this, mm -hmm. I just sit on the piano and start to play. And uh, I had already like this in mind, like a very strong and deep plucker sound which is supporting um, this arpeggio and which is leading into new chord progressions. And this is a very, um, yeah. That's why you also like play it at the end of the exactly. eight, uh, four or eight bars always to give it the chance yeah. to introduce something new. It's, it's a good element to introduce something new. Yeah. So it starts, and this is one, one, two, three, four. Yeah. Can we take a look at the MIDI quickly? That one? Right, I can put it maybe together so we can have... Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. So um, the main idea of that melody is always the same. It's kind of an introduction to, to new bars and new chord progressions. And what is special for me with the sound is, is that all endings are um, always a bit different. So um, there are huge variations. Uh, and that very easy melody, and that makes it, for me, very interesting. It keeps it sounding interesting. It's not like easy to anticipate what, what yes. the next one will do. So long-term hearing pleasure is probably higher because of that, right? Exactly. For example, um, this is always the beginning or the, the, the first part of that theme. So, and this is all played by the piano, right? Yes. They're coming even more changes mm -hmm. and um, yeah, something like this. I really like this one as well. Maybe make a new track out of this melody. <laughs> okay. <I> <laughs> oh, there was a crazy automation here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, 
Okay, so um, you, you have your theme and then you let it loop or something for a longer period of time and then you sit down at the piano and it's like, I'm just going to play like two, three minutes of ideas and then, and then you pick the best ones of those? Exactly, yeah. 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 Um, this was uh, all played and uh, yeah, then I choose the ones I like and put them all together and start to create a structure with uh -huh. it. Okay. One of my favorite plugins, Crystallizer. Difficult to describe this tool. It's technically a um, delay in echo with uh, some great features. Um, so you get very weird pitch sounds. Okay. I really like this recycle button here. Yeah. You can create wonderful new audio parts. I was working on some uh, question and answer elements. Um, they sound like this. I call it waves here. They're always coming in between the main synth. Mm -hmm. So it's really kind of an answer. Mm -hmm. It's a nice game they're playing. These are actually recorded of the um, records of the main sim, uh, which I did with the crystallizer. Mm -hmm. It's an effect to um, make wonderful echoes and uh, weird delays. So I was just recording those and place them in, an, in the perfect position. Mm -hmm. So this is basically recorded a version of the diva sound, but you put the crystallizer behind it and then messed around with different settings of the crystallizer. Uh, first, I put the crystallizer on this. Uh, mm -hmm. on, the, on the diva stem, mm -hmm. and I put it on 100% uh, wet, so it sounds like this. And I was recording these stems. As you can see here, they're pretty long audio fights. Mm -hmm. And then you're picking the, the parts you want. Exactly, yeah, uh -huh. here as well. And so... EQing off the high frequencies you don't want, yeah. maybe side chaining it a little bit. So it's a very easy way to create some new sounds within mm -hmm. the sounds mm -hmm. with the sounds you already have. So basically, you're using the crystallizer as a generator for creative movements of the sound here. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I was supporting this also with some um, pads here mm -hmm. with an omnisphere. Pretty easy MIDI notes but they're creating a unit mm -hmm. with all these stems here. Mm -hmm. Same with the Diva, a uh, typical LFO pad with some very weird movements of the uh, frequencies of delay. The LFO rate is changing all the time. Mm -hmm. And you're also automating the delays here, huh? Mm -hmm. seems... Yes, the timing has changed, so you have a nice pitch sound. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, sounds very interesting over here. And all together it sounds like this. And your bass is also done with Diva? Yes, most of my electronic sounds are made with the Diva, mm -hmm. uh, my favorite BST to create sounds. Mm -hmm. and that's a pretty easy legato bass line. Mm -hmm. Playing F sharp and C sharp. Um, pretty easy chord progression here as well, mm -hmm. but it works great with the main stem. I usually, once I start with a new idea and I know that this idea is a good idea, then I can't stop working and I can't stop to think about anything else. So in the following days, I'm just super focused on doing everything together while I'm composing melodies and while I'm arranging, I also mix in between and uh, so that's always the same way. And then let's play a part where we also have the kick, for example. Nice, rich 
percussion, deep bass, uh, uh, bass drum or kick sound right here. So how do you do that? You know, it sounds so smooth somehow. I do all of my bass drums with the VST kick from Nicky Romero. <laughs> A very nice tool uh, to shape your own bass drums. You can use presets here and uh, What's special about it is that you can, yeah, just paint your own bass drums. Mm -hmm. You can adjust all the frequencies here. Mm -hmm. You have six different parameters. You can control the length of the bass drum. Mm -hmm. You can add some click sound, some hi hats, mm -hmm. and so uh, you can create some very unique bass drums. It sounds like this. I also always like to add some top kicks, mm -hmm. which have a different timing, so each kick sounds different mm -hmm. and kind of organic. Very, very, very um, subtle, huh? Yes. Yeah. And a small groove kick. Maybe I can play the whole drum group. Very easy one with a lot of white noise inside. Mm -hmm. I do often my heads and my snare sounds with a um, white noise tool of the operator. Simple also some, that. Yeah. They are very, very simple but effective. And technically that's it. And it works great with the Apache. And of course, we forgot one element, the chord progression which is coming in in the breakdown the very first time. It's also um, like the bass line actually with uh, some more intervals and uh, proper chords mm -hmm. using F sharp um, major and C sharp major here with some small wavy movements here. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna play it. and it really connects everything. Mm -hmm. The main synth is guiding into the chord progression. The waves are the answers of the uh, main synth and the arpeggio is keeping the, or is gluing the whole harmony together. Mm -hmm. And you like uh, combining three different instruments here to generate the chord sound. Yes, I have one in the center. Mm -hmm. Typical diva sound, diva part. It's also the initial part. And some very distorted ones, which I panned a little bit uh, in the stereo panorama. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. How do you achieve this distortion effect on the sides? Um, with using my favorite plugin, Rob Parton Distortion, I can highly recommend that. Okay. Uh, it costs just 50 euro, and um, there are so many features inside, different um, ways to distort your element mm -hmm. and also to widen. I'm not using it on this pad, but mm -hmm. uh, this is a very cool tool to place your elements in the stereo panorama. Mm -hmm. I did that, for example, with the arpeggio here. Let me show you the A and B result. So this is without, and this is with. A wonderful tool. Suddenly, directly in the stereo panorama, mm -hmm. it has a very nice lo-fi yeah, sound. And great. It sounds completely different. So, and I was using this on the chords as well. to have a very powerful, distorted sound. Frustration never helps and just continue what you're doing. And even if it's not that efficient, at some point it will be. So I sometimes also remember the points where I was writing music for five hours and I was about to stop because I didn't feel something. But in the following hour, then the magic happened and I always remember this. And so that keeps me going till uh, I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe let's have a look into the arrangement. Mm -hmm. It's a very easy one. Mm -hmm. I'm starting with a few patterns, bringing slowly some new ones in. And um, it's actually split in three main parts besides of the intro and outro. This is the very first one. This is the uh, second one, the breakdown and the build up. And this is the third one where everything is coming together. And technically, mm -hmm. the second one, there's a complete new element coming inside, the chord progression. Mm -hmm. Then the third one, everything is coming together. Mm -hmm. So I'm starting very melodic with the arpeggio. I'm bringing in the theme and the bass drum and the bass line. 
slowly some hi hats. to the breakdown where I really go to zero and I slowly build up everything. Mm -hmm. um, the theme has the powers, the arpeggio is going down the bass line of course and the drums of course as well. And slowly I bring in everything together. Mm -hmm. So and the main part of the breakdown, it sounds like this. Also with some vocal samples. tension sounds. And again, zero. Till I come back again to this. And now you're kind of building it up again, right? You decided against the full-on drop and you're going again, building it up again to have the full drop a bit later. Right? Exactly. So now we slowly bringing everything together. It's uh, technically like the beginning, but the chord progression is coming in now. So this is a moment where everything of A and B coming together, so I create a C part, yeah. technically. And of course, the final moment of the climax um, has also some different changes inside. The main sim uh, is one octave higher to create more space and something else as well. And it's really blowing up. The new ride as well. to the outro. The album was entirely written during the lockdown and also in a time where I was completely a part of my girlfriend because of the global travel ban. So uh, this album really helped me to get through that time and all these emotions. Mixing um, happens at what stage of your production? Actually, during the composition, during I create and I write, mm -hmm. most of the things are already in place. Mm -hmm. So um, once the track is done, the arrangement is done, and everything what I want to include is there, mm -hmm. uh, I always feel like I'm 80% of the, oh. I, I achieved 80% of the mix. So in the end, I'm not doing that much. Maybe mm -hmm. some minor changes uh, to, to bring something more up and down, to make some volume changes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so with the production, 80-90% of the mixing is already done and then you start playing it or how does that work? Usually I start playing it um, when I finished or when I was on this stage with this track. Uh, I was uh, in the middle of the lockdown and there were no shows by that time. But um, shortly after that, I think two weeks after that, I played it for Circle. In for the live set. In the, the live set in the balloon. Yes. Great. And that was basically the first time you played it to an audience in front of their computers and on the internet. The very first time, yeah. Wow. All right, so thank you so much for taking a look into the project with us. I wish you a lot of success with the new album and with this track and with your upcoming live sets and I hope to see you soon. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this little walkthrough and maybe you learned a little bit. See you soon on stage. Mm -hmm.